Born on the 4th of July in the year of the bicentennial, it was perhaps a foregone conclusion that Lane Bobian would represent Team USA. The Coronado native went from top high school player in the San Diego area to top college player at Stanford University, winning an NCAA title as a freshman and earning MPSF Player of the Year honors as a senior. At 6'6", Bobian morphed into an elite defender on the international scene, capping up at three Olympic Games for Team USA, winning silver with a breakthrough squad in 2008. Add to that three Pan American Games gold medals, he was the first American to play for a Hungarian club, joining KSI in 1999. Bobian was sought after around the globe, competing for top clubs in Brazil and France, along with the New York Athletic Club back home. He retired following the London Olympics, but has stayed involved as a coach, clinic instructor, and supporter of Team USA. Bobian was twice part of the USA staff at the World University Games in 2013 and 2015. Although Lane was uh, probably one of the more athletic teenagers you would find, his mental toughness defined his rise to excellence. His mental ability to strive to achieve, his tenacity to push through the setbacks, his focus to establish and pursue personal and team goals, all unparalleled among young athletes that I had a chance to work with over the years. All the way back to college, he could play as a center, he was a defender. Um, and then with the national teams, he played both the left and right side of the pool. He was a main post up for us at times on the left side of the pool. He could defend the best players on the right side. And then also he was a, a center defender. Then when you have that versatility, you know, he found himself in the water a lot because he could basically play any position. If you had asked me during the time that he was at Stanford, can you imagine that he would be a, a three-time Olympian and be in the U.S. Water Polo Hall of Fame? I said, no, probably not. Uh, he, he didn't, you know, he didn't really stand out as being uh, a person that might be on the Olympic team, you know. But then I think that last year he got kind of excited about water polo, so he decided to go out to train for the and try out for the 2000 Olympic team, and uh, he didn't make the final cut. Uh, and you know, most guys, if they don't make it that one time, they probably would not try it again. Well, Lane persevered. He said, I'm going to come back and I'm going, to, I'm going to make this team. And then he made an Olympic team four years later and they won the silver medal. And then he made the Olympic team four years after that. So a three-time Olympian. What he did was what I've seen very few people do in the sport of water polo. He took over the game, both ends of the pool, swimming down, defending, swimming up, scoring, shooting. He was amazing. Now, of course, I understand that if you do it on the collegiate level, that's one thing. If you do it on the club level, that's another thing. If you do it on the Olympic level, that's huge. And very few people were able to do that. One of the most intelligent players in and out of the water um, can read the game tremendously. He was the guy that was always in front of me. I always could trust that he was going to make the right decision as my center defender. He always made his blocks and he just had that X factor. He had the next step where, you know, if we're down a goal, I knew that he was going to shut down the person he was playing against and he could score that big goal to help get us back in the game. Coaching lane was just a fabulous experience. He had a remarkable discipline and he was a big help for me because of his excellent cooperation during trainings and games. I mean, he was a real smart guy. It was tough to say, no, Lane, you're wrong. He wasn't a showboat or anything like that. He had that innate ability there. And he was a great athlete. He could swim, he could shoot, he could defend. He also had a personality and charisma that you wouldn't believe. That's why the guys in New York loved him. Sure, he was a great player, but to have people that are sincere, that love what they do, that's a different story. And Lane was like that. Lane's role on the team was very important. Due to his experience and leadership, he would always be there to help and uh, guide his teammates to be better. I am very grateful that I have had the luck to coach him and at the same time become best friends with him. A lot of people don't know this story, but Lane was 
one of the people that came and consoled me when I got cut in 2004 and he knew the journey that I had and I knew the journey that he had so in 2008 after we beat Serbia um, there's a picture actually that's all over the internet of me and him grabbing our heads and you know embracing each other because you know we played so many years together and we ended up making it to the gold medal game so that was an incredible special moment that I'll never forget us battling and embracing our heads together. Lane was very outgoing, knew people everywhere in the world. He made things really fun. You know, there's a lot of work that goes into it, but it's also important to have balance, and Lane brought that balance for the team as well. Talk about one of the most dynamic players in the history of the game, but my favorite thing about Lane was our dinners. You know, we'd sit there and the whole team would be talking water polo, and him and I would be deciding which place we're going to go to dinner and what we're going to eat at dinner and what wine we're going to pair it with. So, Lane, I miss that about you, man. I miss you. So many of us are very proud to see Lane becoming a member of this prestigious club of Hall of Famers. A very special shout out to his parents, Ron and Vicky, his brother Brady, and Grandpa Don. Congratulations to you, Lano.